Hello, everyone. I hope this is a good day for you. This is, after all, a day that the Lord has made, so let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, I miss you and uh, pray things are going well. And I uh, hope that this midweek devotion will be helpful uh, as you journey during this time. I'll continue my mini series of questions from God and uh, hope that it gives you something to think about today. So our reading for this day is from the eighth chapter of Mark, verses 14 to 21. Now the disciples had forgotten to bring any bread, and they had only one loaf with them in the boat. And he cautioned them, saying, Watch out. Beware of the yeast of the Pharisees and the yeast of Herod. They said to one another, It is because we have no bread. And becoming aware of it, Jesus said to them, why are you talking about having no bread? Do you still not perceive or understand? Are your hearts hardened? Do you have eyes and fail to see? Do you have ears and fail to hear? And do you not remember? When I broke the five loaves for the 5,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? They said to him, 12. And the seven for the 4,000, how many baskets full of broken pieces did you collect? And they said to him, seven. Then he said to them, do you not yet understand? Here ends the reading. Last week, we began this mini series on questions from God, exploring the question, where are you? I hope you had a chance to reflect on some answers to that God question for your own life. Today, the question is, do you not yet understand? More than just a few times throughout the Gospel of Mark, Jesus asks this question of the disciples. He did this because after all Jesus had said and done, they ought to be able to understand what is going on, but they don't seem to. The account begins by telling us that the disciples had only one loaf of bread with them in the boat. Later, it says they have no bread at all. The fact that they had forgotten to bring bread may not seem like such a big deal, except a few verses earlier, Mark is telling us of the feeding of the 4,000 by Jesus, where there were seven baskets of bread left over. And just two chapters earlier, we were told of the feeding of the 5,000, where there were 12 baskets left over. And here are the disciples with no bread, afraid that they might go hungry. After those two wonderful and powerful feeding miracles, the disciples should know that Jesus could supply their needs from even the one loaf they had, or even from no loaves at all. Their faith should have grown after those extraordinary experiences, but all we see is their lack of understanding and insight. In spite of all their eyes have seen, in spite of all their ears have heard, they still do not get it. They still do not get who Jesus is and what Jesus is about. In our reading, Jesus tells the disciples to beware of the Pharisees and the leaven of Herod. The Pharisees were characterized by external appearances, by what looked good on the outside. Herod symbolized and embodied a spirit of worldliness and secularism. 
Jesus is telling the disciples to beware of these attitudes that can infect and undermine their faith. Jesus is calling them to look at what he is offering, at what he is giving. Rather than outward appearances, Jesus is bringing something that will feed them on the inside. Rather than just another empty worldly system, Jesus is introducing them to a world filled with an eternal power and peace. How could the disciples have missed all of that? How could they still be in the dark? Sometimes the questions we want to ask God, the questions we want God to answer, come out of the struggles of our lives. Sometimes they come out of our intellectual curiosity. More often than not, our questions reflect our own lack of understanding of who Jesus truly is and what Jesus has truly done. We ask questions because we want to know what, more often than not, we already know. I think that is why God asks questions of us, in order to get us to search our hearts and our minds and our spirits to discover and to uncover what is already there within us. Do we still not yet understand? You see, we know the witness of history, how God has been active creating and recreating throughout time. We know the history of God's people, how God has been faithful even when God's people were not how God has kept promises even when God's people have not. We have heard of countless saints through ages past who having been inspired by God and filled with God's spirit have witnessed and ministered in word and deed to a troubled and broken world. And perhaps, hopefully, we have been able to see in our own life the ways God has been present with hope and healing and strength. We have the witness of God's holy word. We have above all the heart of the gospel witness to the death and resurrection of Jesus, where we see most clearly and powerfully the height and depth of God's love for the world, for us, for you. We know all of this. Do we not yet understand? Are we still slow to trust? Are we still slow to make the venture of faith? There are lots of questions we cannot get answers to, and perhaps never will. Maybe when we get to heaven, we will find out but I suspect the answers won't matter anymore then. For now, though, we ought to at least understand this much. We ought to understand that God so loved the world that God gave the only Son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. We ought to understand that Jesus came to restore the broken relationship between God and us, between all who live in this world. We ought to understand that Jesus' purpose is to heal what is broken and restore what is lost. We ought to understand that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. We ought to understand that there is nothing that can snatch us out of God's hand. We ought to understand all of that and more. Do we still not understand? There is probably a lot more we want to understand, but isn't that all we really need to understand? 
I pray that understanding will be enough. For truly it is enough to give us life and love and faith, now and forever. Amen. I want to pray a prayer for St. Mark the Evangelist. His commemoration day is on April 25th, coming up. So let us pray. Almighty God, you have enriched your church with Mark's proclamation of the gospel. Give us grace to believe firmly in the good news of salvation and to walk daily in accord with us. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray our Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now may Almighty God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit bless you now and forever. Amen. Be at peace. Christ is with you. Amen.